I, like most people in the past, when something would ail me, I would go to a doctor for help because that is what they're there for. And I cannot remember, I'm sure like most people, I cannot remember a time when a doctor actually healed me. <laughs> like I remember a few years before I met you, I had such a bad sore throat and my mom said, oh, I feel so sorry for you. You, you, you brace yourself every time you swallow. I'd go, and she said, now you run to my ear, nose and throat doctor, go. I went, it costed me $90. He gave me a prescription for antibiotics, wiped out my good flora, everything. And basically I healed when I probably would have healed myself. But then you know what? I wasn't eating as healthy back then. So I was susceptible well, to yeah. sore throats right. and this and that. I was in a transitioning period. I wasn't so, I mean, I thought I was in the know, but I really wasn't. I did eat bread. You know, I'm like a lot of people, you think, oh, it's vegan, it's safe. It, when It's whole grain, it's, it's grass-fed if, if you're eating meat. It's, you know, all these excuses as to why they're eating healthy. When in actuality, bread will destroy your body from head to toe as it started to destroy mine. And before I met you, I had this horrific pain in the heels of my both of my feet. They were there for six years. Six years, you guys. And here's me thinking at 35, oh, I guess that's just old age, like everybody thinks. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to cut carbs out of my diet, the bad carbs, the wheat, the bread. And Guess what? One month, one month, I, my that pain, it took a month for all that bread and whatever is in there to leave my body. And within a month, that pain disappeared. So rather than go to a doctor, if I would have gone to a doctor, which actually I did go to a doctor for that foot pain, it costed me $145. He misdiagnosed it. Um, and he sold me a boot to put on my leg and wear it home. <laughs> well, think about it. Doctors don't cure anything. They don't heal anything. They are there to hide the pain and take body parts out and maybe put bones back together, you know, if they're broken, which is good. They're good for emergency stuff like that. If you break a body and your body is in pieces, they put the pieces kind of back where they're supposed to be, but they don't do the healing. They just wrap it up. They put the bone back together, wrap right. it up, and then you have to go home and then your body does the healing. Doctors don't heal. They don't even know. I ask most doctors, what causes something? Why, what do you do to prevent that from happening? They don't know. All they know is take this to hide the pain, take this to, to you know, kill the, the antibiotics to, to kill any- The infection or whatever. Yeah. But My, if they really knew what health was, they wouldn't be giving antibiotics because that wipes out your immune system. It wipes out your gut flora, which is one of the big, that's 70% of your immune system right there. A friend of mine and I had a fun day planned last week <clears throat> and she canceled because she said she woke up with a, an eye infection and she was gonna go make an appointment to see an ophthalmologist. And I said, are you crazy? What is he gonna do? He's gonna give you antibiotics. <laughs> and she goes, well, what do I do? And I go, okay, you're asking me, I will tell you, please do this. Uh, melt, uh, dissolve a teaspoon of salt in like 16 ounces of hot water, let it cool, flush your eye with that, and do not eat sugar. Don't touch anything sweet. No wheat, no sugar, no... And we ended up getting together. It worked. She felt better. Um, uh, another woman wrote that she had a, a UTI, a urinary tract infection. What can I take? I told her, oh my gosh, please listen to me. Do not go to a doctor, do this. Take vitamin C every four hours. And stop the bread and the sugar. Yes, yeah, stop that bread and sugar. 
and take some echinacea every four hours as well. Have that, those two, the echinacea, and I, I know Marcus wouldn't really agree with my protocol, but this is what I prescribed her. And it worked. Wait, she called me and said, and she was she was on the toilet, crying, urinating. It was so bad. Well, the next day, she's all ecstatic. Oh my God! And she said that she wasn't she she wasn't adamant about taking it every four hours. Then she felt it coming back. So then she said she jumped on it again, and she asked me, "How long am I going to have to do this?" And I said, "I don't know. It depends on how clogged or you know her body is." But I would do it for a week or two, and she did. And I mean, look at this. And if you would have gone to a doctor, boom, antibiotics for that UTI. A week or two? That is ridiculous. It should have taken a day or two because the answer to any health problem is not what to take. It's what to stop doing that caused the problem in the first place. You can take all the echinacea in the world if you want. If you keep eating sugar and bread and fruit juice and feeding the yeast that is going out of control, that's not, it's not going to make any difference at all. The biggest, like I always said, you can't put a fire out with water if you keep pouring gasoline on the fire at the same time. The biggest way to solve anything is to stop doing what caused the problem. Most people refuse to accept that what they eat, what they drink, what they smoke is causing the problem. And they don't want to stop that because that's what they're addicted to. That's their comfort. And you know, I just had a thought. If your body is so clogged from all those foods, then you know what? Oh my gosh, all these doctors' offices make sense. It's a quick it's money. fix that, or that uh, maybe the echinacea and vitamin C wouldn't, you know, help that person because they are so clogged. So the, basically, the, the best thing you can do for yourself is give your body a head start in healing by knocking out the bread, the wheat, the pastas, the processed food, crackers, the cereal. So what do you eat? Don't go crazy with the fruit juices. That, that's exactly that's concentrated sugar. It's fine to eat the fruit, but don't juice it because that concentrates the sugars. If you're going to use fruit juice, mix it with fiber and, and non-sweet juices and like have a little bit of it in your smoothie, but don't drink pure fruit juice. That's just when I first met Marcus, we were having so much fun as one does in the beginning. And um, wait a minute. We, whoa, whoa. It's still a fun. I, well, I mean, it was crazy, but like we were in the big, I'm like all excited and I'm, I got out of the pool uh, to go get something inside and I'm oh. running back oh. towards him on a floor, a hardwood floor. He slipped and fell. I slipped and fell on my butt bone. Oh my God, my tailbone, my tailbone hurt so bad. And the bruise on my butt was literally like this big. A big blue circle. It was so big. And for a week and a half, it was so painful. I walked around for a week and a half like that. And finally, I said to Marcus one day, I said, Marcus, I am going to go down a bottle of aspirin. This pain is just so bad. And he said, wait. And he ran to his medicine cabinet, mixed up this concoction, gave it to me. And I continued my night. It wasn't until four o'clock the next day that it hit me. Oh my God, the pain is gone. After almost two weeks of really bad pain, gone. And I'm like, how did you do this? Oh my goodness. The second thing he did was, I had a bite on my pinky toe or something. It just got inflamed, it was swollen to the point where I couldn't walk on it in the middle of the night. I had to like drop on my knees and crawl to the bathroom. And I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with my foot, my toe? And the next day we were going to get his car um, worked on. So I wore a flip flop on my bad foot and a shoe, it was winter, and a shoe on my other one. Cause I could not put my, my foot in a shoe, that bad one. And I remember um, I, as we got into the car, I told Marcus, I said, oh Marcus, by the way, I have an appointment with a foot doctor tomorrow at 1.30. And he goes, wait. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs inside for 15 minutes, comes back out with this green drink. She says the word doctor. I go into high gear. I say that. Oh, yeah. He went and he was like, no way. That's the trigger word. So he brings me this drink. It was so gross, but I knew it was good for me. You know, it wasn't like I was drinking um, tequila or something. 
I knew it was good for me, so I did drink it, and I hobbled into the car dealership, and we're sitting there. He's over there. I'm in front of the TV. An hour and a half later, now this is after my foot is like this for over a week, two weeks maybe. I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, my God, my pain is gone. It doesn't hurt. And I got up to test it. I hobbled in to this dealership. I'm now walking. And I looked at my toe and it was still red and swollen, but I, I was able to walk. And that is when I turned to Marcus and I was almost in tears if I really wasn't in tears. And I said, my, Marcus, dear Lord, what is going on here? All my life, all my 48 years back then, all I knew was you have a pain, you go to a doctor, he gives you some Band-Aid, you pay him money, and you're, you pray that it heals or it goes away one day. And what Marcus was showing me is this healing instantly. And I was just really like, it was almost like I broke out of the matrix. I couldn't believe how backwards this is, that, that doctors, they're, they're there. All my life I was taught that doctors are there to help us and make us feel better. Well, they make you feel better. They gave you feel good drugs. But, <laughs> but they- <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I feel really. And I realized- I'll go now. I realized- Give me some more of that. It, it, have you ever been healed by a doctor? No, but I had to tell doctors to stop doing things to me that would have permanently affected me in a really bad way. And the third thing that Marcus did was, I went to a restaurant and I ate vegan. I ordered the artichoke and the salad. And just those two, I could feel it. Mm -mm. My body is so pure that if I eat anything remotely bad, I feel it. It immediately affects me. And it was so bad. Oh, I was in so much pain. And I'm like, oh, Marcus, can we please go and not chat afterward? And we're, we walk out of the restaurant and I said, Marcus, you have to go get the car. I can't, I couldn't move, it was so bad. So he went, it was a Friday night. I, I ended up throwing up there. People thought, oh my gosh, she got drunk early. Well, all I wanted to do was go home and get in fetal position in bed, which is what I did. So here comes Marcus 10 minutes later with a glass of water and he goes, here, drink this. And I'm like, okay. And as I'm drinking it, Oh my God, by the time I was finished with the, with the um, drink, everything, every pain in my stomach vanished. Another holy moly um, moment with Marcus and I said, Marcus, I, I mean, at this point I'm thinking, is Marcus an alien? What is going on with this guy? Never in my life have I been healed by a doctor. This guy has healed me three times in a row now, instantly. And I'm like, dear Lord, Marcus, what the hell was that? And he goes, it's ozonated water. It kills toxins in your body. And I said, when my father was in the hospital dying of cancer 14 years ago, there was a football player screaming in agony for morphine for his food poisoning symptoms because he was in so much pain. And I remember the nurse going, wait, wait, we have to run tests. All they had to do was say, what's your problem, food poisoning? Here you go, drink this ozonated water. By the way, you cannot buy ozonated water. You can, but it, it's useless. You have, ozone only lasts 20 minutes, so it has to be freshly made. I made a video about it. It's not a simple, cheap thing to have. It's like a $5,000 machine, but uh, there are other ways to get rid of food poisoning. I have a, an ebook on that. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, there are a lot of ways to do something. Don't, you don't have to copy everything I do. Just know that the real way to solve any problem is to not think about more of what to take, but what to stop doing and clean out your body. Clean up the mess, get it out of you, and then only put the good stuff back in. Um, and another really important part point, you guys, that you need to take away from this is don't always listen to your doctor. He is not always right. Do not be afraid to 
argue something right. when I when it comes to nutrition and e immunity and stuff like that. Okay. So as far as putting bones together, yeah, that's why that's when fine. okay, so or doing surgery where they sew stuff up, that's okay. Working in the restaurant all these decades, you know, I especially me, I'm so fast. Um, I had a couple doozies cuts to my fingers that it made me, I had to rush to the hospital. And I remember one, I was cutting artichoke, Jerusalem artichokes, and you really have to get, start with momentum. And I went right on my finger. And I remember I ran to my mom and I go, oh my God, oh my God, how is it? And she looked at it and she goes, oh, drive yourself to the doctor quick. And I went to the emergency room and uh, they, the doctor had a bunch of students with him and he was using me as an example for injuries and what to do. And he said, so, well, first of all, they put me in a room to x-ray it. And the guy just locks me in a room and I go, uh, excuse me, shouldn't I have some sort of protection? It was for an x-ray. And he goes, oh yeah. And he gives me the equivalent of a mouse pad. And I said, no, 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 this doesn't seem right. Common sense told me it doesn't seem right that a mouse pad should only be protecting me in a room dosing me with radiation. I got up, went outside, saw another doctor walking past with with armor and I said, sir, don't you think I should have more protection on in this room? He went, absolutely, and put this suit of armor on me. And uh, once they did take the x-ray, then um, they put me in another room and uh, the students came in and they said, okay, now we are, she has a laceration of the tibulus, fibulus, whatever, and we are going to amputate her finger right here. And that's when I said, uh, 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 no, he must have hated me. I ruined his spiel right there. And I said, you are not in cutting off my finger. Amputation is such a serious word. He said, it's just going to dry up and fall off if we don't amputate it. And I told him, no, it's not. I am a raw fooder. <laughs> I was so proud to be a raw fooder back in 1998. You know, I'm like, I can heal from anything. And he very reluctantly said, all right, we'll just sew this up. Now we're gonna t tear off her fingernail. And I said, no, you're not. You're not gonna do that either. Just do that and let me go on my way. And look at my finger, how beautifully it healed. If I would have listened to the doctor, I would have had a stump. I would have been dosed with radiation. Probably, you know, it's just, the best thing you can do is stay away from foods that just wreak havoc and just destroy your body. And basically that is the majority of the food that this country is pushing down our throats. So you have to really educate yourself, do trial and errors, stop eating everything. Why don't, if you go on a fast, a seven to 14 day fast, just do liquids of all kind, your body will immediately start to feel better because it's not, it doesn't, it's not being bombarded with those foods that are hurting it. The best thing you can do for yourself and your and your health is what? Quit bread, and, and I know it's so hard. I told my brother I th that he... What about a seen bread? What about whole grain bread? What about... All bread. All bread, it, all bread is the it, devil. It's, it all wreaks havoc on the body. It's baked in an oven. There's no life left in it. You've killed it with high heat. Not to mention there's a process that all wheat has to go through in order to become any type of bread. And it's so heavily sprayed with pesticides and Roundup. And I mean, I don't want any of that crap in my body. And every time you eat a bagel, a waffle, a French fry, a not a French fry, a potato ch cereal, anything, maybe anything, yeah. you're getting round up and other really bad pesticides. Even if it's body. organic, even if it's what, I, it doesn't matter. Wheat, there's a whole, there's books on that that we can put links to. So to sum this up, the best thing you can do for yourself is eat right. If you don't have access to healthy food, I just wouldn't eat. I'd skip that meal. What else would you add, Dr. Hopkins? Well, it's the same thing I've been saying all along. Only eat what you find in nature in the way, the form that you find it in nature, in the plant world, as much as possible. Don't eat 
the sugar and the wheat and, 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 and the fried and the this. Right. Uh, yeah, they already know all this stuff. They've already heard it a million times, but. Yeah. <sighs> I'm getting tired of saying it. But, oh my God, it's just at age 52 that the, I feel the way I feel. Like, it, how do I feel? Okay, so how, could, how do you describe how you feel? Well, I feel no pain. I'm loaded with energy and I'm very strong. And and you have a lot of energy that never stops. We <laughs> and, need to end the And video. I'm not depressed. There's no mood swings. I mean, this food works. So, God, I hope I inspire you guys to take a look at your diet and um, fix it. Fix it and watch. Good. Right. <laughs> you guys take care. We'll see you in the next video. We just want to, God, if I could just take my magic wand and give you what I feel and just make you all change the way you're eating like that, the world would be such a happy place. Don't ever say I don't let her talk. <laughs> okay. You guys, take care. Hope everybody's having a great day. Bye. That's, that's going to be a good video because you're just so casual in it. <laughs>